I've been kind of struggling lately. It's tough to prioritize what engines get torn down and when. They seem to gravitate towards the easy stuff or the stuff I haven't had before, something that's blown up catastrophically. And there have been certain engines that I've been avoiding because they look difficult. The Audi V10 was the last actual difficult engine I've torn down. And I, I, I figured I'd just pull the Band-Aid off and do another difficult one. So today we're gonna take apart a four, excuse me, a Jaguar Rover 5 liter AJ supercharged V8. This is a 500 horsepower engine and it may not be bad. I, it's a return. This engine was returned to a yard that sold it and when an engine gets returned as defective, they usually don't just put it back on the shelf and waste somebody else's time. They usually just send it in for court, which is how I got it. So today we could take apart an engine that was perhaps misdiagnosed. God, I hope not. I actually, I'm hoping for damage but not too much because the parts are expensive. The AJ V8 family of engines came out in the mid 90s in the XK8 and the XJ8, and then in the early 2000s, the Lincoln LS, the S type, and the Ford Thunderbird all had an AJ variant. Even the LR3, there's some other ones in the interim, and then the 5 liter came out sometime around 2010 in the XF, uh, the XJ, the XK, and the Range Rover and Range Rover Sport. And I, I could be missing one there. I'm not that familiar with these engines yet. Now, if you do need a good AJ V8, a five liter supercharged engine, shameless plug here, I have two of them in stock. I have one with 205,000 miles on it that I'm, I'm not really quite sure how it got that many miles on it because they don't usually last that long. I also have one with uh, 75,000 miles on it and there's a significant price difference between the two. Now. I really haven't heard too many great things about these engines other than the power they make. Nobody seems to like working on them. The labor costs are very expensive. The parts are very expensive. And if you, if you just look at it, I, I think this has the most bolts of anything I've ever torn down. The V10 might come close, but this, this is pretty, pretty bolt laden. Normally the first thing we do is pull the plugs or drain it or turn it over. And I do plan on doing those things, but since I'm a, an adult child, the first thing I'm going to do is turn the supercharger because that's the fun part. And quite a bit of play in the coupler, which is a pretty common problem for these superchargers and other OEM superchargers. They use a softer material than metal, I guess to reduce vibrations. I don't know if it prolongs supercharger life or keeps it quiet, but they do wear out and there is kind of a delay in engagement when you turn them back and forth. Now it could also be caused by worn lobes, however, the lack of resistance here in this field of whatever five, 10 degrees this is, tells me that this is likely the coupler that's worn out. Well, the very next thing I'm going to do is drain it. Now these are supposed to be drained, but we all know what that usually means. And if you're uh, wondering why the high pressure fuel pumps are down here, I don't know. That's just where they put them. Mmm, it's still got oil in it. I don't see any sparkles. It's not a lot of oil. While this thing is draining, we're gonna go ahead and pop the filter out of it so we can take a look. That was also already loose, so maybe we'll find some clues. Okay, now we need to get the filter out of this. Well, Take a look here. There's definitely some metal in there. It's not a lot. I wonder if someone pulled this out, saw a little bit of metal, and decided that this engine wasn't for them, and then returned it as defective. Well, see now there's a couple other big pieces in there. Still not as bad as you would expect for something that was defective. This might shy me away from that, considering these engines are like $4,000, $5,000 plus. Next, we'll see if it turns over. Now, it does have plugs in it, so it should have compression. Oh, it's making some bad noises in here. Actually, I can watch that chain. Uh-oh, I think I see what's going on here. Yeah, that's not good. It doesn't really turn over that great. So this view is looking in the oil cap. Watch as I turn this engine over. I'm turning it over and everything seems okay, but sorry about it shaking. Yeah, 
Ooh, it's getting real stiff. Don't. See, now there's some play here, and it's not turning the chain. Oh, see it jump? Oh, did you see that? I can't go backwards on these engines. At least I don't think I can, and I don't want to. Maybe this has a timing failure. These engines have never had timing chain problems. There we go again. Next, we'll get to the plugs. And to do that, have to pull the coils. And to do that, have to get the harness out of the way. It doesn't look like it's too difficult, though. Why did I say something? All right, that might be enough room to get those coils by. But it's not. I need to disconnect the injectors. All right, plenty of room now. Spark plugs look pretty good, actually. They're all the same kind, which I expected, and they all look about the same. Nothing's been regapped by a piston, so that's good. The next thing we're going to do is remove this high-pressure fuel line, which still had a lot of pressure in it, apparently. Okay, well, that was a shocker. I actually just looked away. It's like a habit when working on fuel system. Just look the other way. Fuel lines out. Next, we're going to remove this top plate, which is not just a plate. It actually has the water-to-air intercoolers in it. Now, with the help of old blue here, this should come right off. Or without, maybe maybe we just had to threaten it. That's probably what it was. Well, this, this is kind of screwing me back here. There we go. So this is what the bottom of that plate looks like. Those are the water to air intercoolers. Pretty effective and it also reduces the amount of charge piping. Now we can have a look at the lobes on the supercharger. And there is definitely some wear on the coating. You can see how the coating is worn down. That's what they're supposed to look like, and that's what it does look like. So this engine probably has some miles on it. I bet it would still create boost just fine, but I'm also rotating that. You can kind of hear that coupler is worn out. Another thing likely worth mentioning, that looks like metal down there. So maybe that's from the blower. It could be from this wear here. Now we can have a good look down the intake ports. And they're pretty carboned up, but they're not terrible for a DI motor. I don't see anything terrible yet. Same thing on this side. No signs of a ton of metal or anything. The next thing I need to remove is this clamp here so that we can get this coolant pipe off. I know this is not the right set of pliers. I know. It, it's fine. See, it's fine. It's totally fine. Safe and fine. Let's finish out the wiring harness in the front. Actually, before I get to pull the blower, I'm gonna kinda try to get most of this harness off. There's a lot of things this plugs into. It's really not nearly as complicated as it first looked. It's just got some clips to pull. It's not too bad. I say that as this doesn't want to move at all, but it's fine. Well, there's one side. Can't be that much more. 
I'm actually gonna remove this. This looks like a coolant crossover. I don't know if that's coolant or find out shortly. Oh, I bet that never leaks. Those flat O-rings. That's just gonna hang out right there. Then there's the connector I needed to get to. And this whole harness should be ready to come all the way off. That wasn't as bad as I thought. Next, I'm gonna remove this bolt that holds this solenoid in because I need to disconnect it from this sub harness so when we pull the blower, that can stay in one place. Actually, we're just gonna unbolt it from this. There, and that can just, can just hang out there. Now, now we are ready to pull the supercharger. It looks like this is held down with these 10 millimeter bolts here. Let's pull those bolts out. Now I've heard that you have to pull these straight up or they don't come out, which is why we're gonna pry it at an angle. No, I'm just kidding. We're gonna try to get it up the correct way. That sounds so wrong. Now there's probably gonna be some other hoses and things. Oh, look at that. You don't need to pull straight up. That's crazy talk. Before I get this too much further, I did find one worm clamp I need to take out. I don't know if that's a factory clamp. I would guess not. Okay. Let's see if we can get this up. That wasn't too bad. Another place I've heard that these things leak is the oil cooler, which is right here. And it leaks in the valley. And it does look like it might have been leaking, judging by the buildup in here. And that would be quite a lot of work in the car to get that replaced. Also, look at these long coolant hoses. There's just a lot of connections in here. A lot of possibilities for leaks. And here's the supercharger. These pieces unbolt, these manifolds unbolt. And I've actually had one of these blowers before. I got it from, oh, I don't remember. It was too long ago. They are worth quite a bit of money, even with the coupler damage that this has. That's a pretty easy thing to fix. However, the lobe wear is another story. And here's what the bottom of that looks like. Nothing much to see. Now I'd like to pull the passenger side or right side valve cover off, but to do that, I need to remove the rail and injectors. And to do that, I need to remove this, or at least get this out of the way. And this actually goes down the side of the block to the high pressure pumps down there. So we'll have to take all that stuff off. Won't be too bad. Let's get these fittings cracked loose first. I'm going to do that. Next, we're going to remove this idler pulley. Okay, this is a little perplexing to me. So there's not really a junction in here that I can see. I mean, is there one back here? I can't imagine. And if there isn't, then why isn't there? Yeah, I don't think so. This is all stapled together. How are you supposed to just bend these out of the way to get the valve cover off? Seems like uh, on a high pressure fuel system, something you wouldn't want to do. And this line goes behind the motor mount bracket. So are, are you telling me you, you can't pull the valve cover? That doesn't make any sense. I'm sure that's not true. And I'm sure there's a way to do this. Uh, I just, I'm gonna take the whole thing apart. So we're just gonna take this motor mount bracket out of the way. We'll get these lines loose and pull it off in one assembly. Oh, where they can feel now. It's fine. Cleans the floor. That's not gasoline. Don't worry about it. It's not, it's just, it's water. This engine just runs on water. Somewhat flammable water. Obviously something else holds this. Oh. Yeah, I don't see any breaks in this. That's kind of crazy. Guys, I, I think my, I think I finally broke it. It doesn't stay in there anymore. Maybe I can spray it out with some 
some brake clean and fix it. Let's try that. Well, let's see if some impact. Oh man, I think it's done. I can't believe it was killed by a Jaguar engine. Oh no, I'm gonna miss this thing. I, I've had this impact for at least like four or five years. I, I'm pretty sure I've run it over. It's been through a lot. It still operates, it just doesn't hold the chuck in anymore. Or the chuck doesn't hold the, the bit in. Okay, now I don't know how this is going to happen. Uh, I don't know if there's a special tool to get these out. Uh, I'm going to use a special tool known as blue. And hopefully I don't break anything in the process. Oh yeah, this is no problem. Oh, fuel, I need to catch this. This is too much. Oh, so th there's the rail. Man, that was like $4 worth of gasoline. Well, there is a special tool. It's an attachment for a slide hammer to get these out. I do not possess it, and I'm not going to wait for it to come in, and I don't know anyone I can borrow it from. So we're going to get these seals off of here. We're going to uh, attempt some things. Of course, hopefully we don't destroy anything in the process. That is always the goal, to, to not ruin parts. I don't like ruining anything, but... This engine has to come apart. I can't get the valve covers with the in off with the injectors in place. And we will do what must be done. Let's try this. Ha! Oh, yes. I thought we would be stuck, but we're not. As long as the rest of them follow suit, we are good. Ooh, this one's pretty stiff. Nope, don't say that. This can't possibly have repercussions. Nope. It's kind of messing up that injector just a little. Well, that certainly didn't work. The fact that I'm having trouble with this one means that I could easily have trouble with the other bank as well. Well, there's a couple of good things here, a couple of bad things. Number one, I ruined that injector. Uh, I couldn't get it out the way I got these three out, and even the way I got these three out could do some damage to those injectors, so that's not really ideal. This is the first one of these I've had, so I don't have any special tooling to remove certain components. The good news is these injectors typically don't sell used, and you should always replace them with new ones. They're not very expensive. So I don't really feel like I did a whole lot of damage here, but now I can get the valve cover off. I turn this sideways, should be able to sneak it past. That's gonna get old. Wow, that's uh, really clean, really clean. This looks pretty much perfect. The only thing that I can note besides the fact that it's got a bad injector in it now, this has a lot of play in it. And I, I don't know that this would be considered within spec. It seems like a lot to me. It could just be where the engine's sitting currently, but that does not seem right. Let's move to the other side. Hey look, one of the injectors came out for me. That's nice. Now since these face the other direction, this might be a little more challenging to get these out. Hmm, mm, this is gonna be a whole bunch of fun. This is why having the correct tooling is the difference between something that takes two seconds and something that uh, you wreck a bunch of parts trying to make it take two seconds. I wonder if I can get this past them the way it sits. I think we're gonna try that. That way I don't do any damage I don't need to do. Let's see if we can get all the bolts out. I think it's worth a shot. Mm. 
Mm, I don't think that's going to happen. Yeah, that, that's certainly not going to happen. All right, let's, let's go and see what we can do. Maybe we can just rotate these. Oh, yeah. Oh, I think we're in business now. Yes. Well, that worked out pretty well. Same story on this side. Lots and lots of slack. This is, there's no way this is normal on this. When I push these two together, this actually makes contact with this. This is not a dipstick tube. Uh, I really, I guess it just, it's probably just feeds oil to this part of the timing system. But that's, that's bad. Is it a stretch chain, you think? Or is there a tension that has failed? Man, look at the amount of slop there. That's it's probably the loosest chain we've seen on the channel. Now I guess we can pull the exhaust manifolds. That's the first time I've seen those kind of fasteners on exhaust manifolds. While we're here, let's just get this motor mount bracket out of the way. I'm actually going to pay some attention to the front of the engine. We're going to strip everything off the front and get to the timing chain. What? Oh, that doesn't come out that easy. Okay. Oh, this impact. Oh, uh, plastic fitting in the water pump. Huh. Can't really inspect this. I mean, I suppose I could pull this apart, but I don't think that's going to be the problem. It's pretty decent looking, though. While we're in here, let's get this oil filter housing. Now we can get this harmonic balancer off. Now, I don't know if this is going to come right off or not. That might be a little bit of work. But we have blue, just in case this thing goes flying. Oh, I'm just going to have to walk it back and forth. Let's get a second pry bar. This should work. And if it doesn't, it should have. No. For sure, no. I really don't want to get it hot because the crank pulley is worth some money. So let's get some penetrator on it. That's good for it. I think it's just all this corrosion holding this thing on. I mean, I do have a slightly larger bar here. Hopefully I can do this without doing any damage, but eh, sometimes there's casualties. Ah. Uh, okay. Did not expect that. Are these two pieces here? Yeah, I guess that's just how it's supposed to be. I don't think I did any damage at all. It looks like I just kicked this piece sideways, which popped this off. Well, that's good. Just get this little bar in here. Sounds bad. That's the sound of the pulley moving on the corrosion. In the wrong direction though. There we go. Get the crank pulled out. What a bolt. So after a little bit of research, yes, there is a special tool. What are we gonna do? We're gonna use my harmonic balancer puller and see if we can just, just get a little bit Pulled off just a hair. This will work, right? Maybe. Uh, maybe I need to use the impact with this. That's always a safe bet. Let's let's try that. Now we can pull this lower timing cover. 
what's behind door number one? Stuff. Before we get into what's inside the lower timing cover, let's get the upper covers off. Man, this impact's really getting old. Is that it? Does Blue agree, is that it? That is not it. I have missed some bolts, or maybe not. I just need to try harder. Now I do. It's just glued very well. And it's got a dowel on each side. Yep, it was just stuck in the dowels and that was it. Let's go to the other side. Now it does look like someone's been in here. There's bolts missing there, there, and there. And it wasn't me. This doll is down at the bottom. Will you just let go? I'll just give it a little tap. Yeah, that's all it took. Now we're gonna try to turn this over and see if we can see anything wrong. I mean, you can watch this chain jump. Look at the slack here. I don't know, maybe it's a tensioner problem. But I bet you these are oil pressure fed, so it's really hard to gauge whether these are bad or not. Those don't really have a oh, weight. They're spraying oil out of the seal. That's not supposed to happen. I'm pretty sure that's not supposed to happen anyway. So if I compress this timing chain tensioner, and actually it's not doing it right now, but it was spraying oil out of the seal. And perhaps the seal is bad this one I can compress too, but it doesn't spray oil out of it. Just this one. Now I do believe these are oil pressure fed, at least they, they look like. If I take these off, there'll be an oil passage behind them. So it's really hard to say whether they're good or not, but I'm pretty sure they're not supposed to spray oil out of that seal. Man, if that's what's wrong with this, that's kind of a shame. Still going to tear the whole thing down because it could have vent valves, could have jumped time. There's no real way of knowing until we get the whole thing apart. I'm certainly not going to sell this to somebody as a good engine when I believe that there's probably some other damage inside. Well, I was poking around this thing and I found something else. There is a piece of plastic that is most likely from some timing component and it's laying right there on the cylinder head. Let's see if we can move that. Yeah, that, that's not supposed to be there. Now, where did it come from? There's lots of black plastic in here, but I bet once we get all of this stuff apart, we'll figure out where it came from. Luckily, I was able to get the tool I need pretty quickly from uh, the internet. It's a uh, TP52. It's Torx Plus. This is a poly drive socket. I don't know. I don't really know why they keep inventing these new fasteners. I don't think they do anything that what already exists couldn't. So let's get these cracked loose. I would normally use the impact on it, but because the only one available was a long one, and I do need these for the uh, main cap bolts, we're gonna be a little gentle on it. I guess, I don't, there's not, they're not very tight. No, this is easy. I'll just use the impact. Oh. Now it's time to peel the timing components off. I'm gonna start with the uh, tensioners, and then we'll get the rails. That looks safe. I'm just gonna look the other way and, uh... oh, it's not that bad. Oh, it might be that bad. Yeah, it's that bad. Come on. Nah, nothing to be scared of there. Now, this was the tensioner that when I squeezed it, it shot oil out around oh, the piston. Part. Hmm. 
The oil in it looks clean. Now we'll start pulling the rails out. Will these come out? Oh yeah. I remember one of these had a broken, something was broken on it. There's, there's a piece of plastic that's actually still there in the cylinder head. I don't know if we can tell what this came from. This rail looks, I mean, it doesn't look terrible. I don't see anything broken. This one, this one is in a, it's home. So I'm gonna get the other rails out and then hopefully I can get enough slack, get the chain off and pull everything apart. Well, that didn't make any noise, did it? I think, uh, I think it's time for a new impact. So this one, yeah, this one looks just fine. Nothing's missing on this, but this, yeah, this one's good too. Where did the missing, or where did this broken piece of plastic come from? Will this come out now? This is what I suspected was broken. But guess what? It's perfect. Yeah, let's get that piece out so we can compare when we do find it. There's that black piece of plastic. I'm gonna set this over on my table so that way when we do find it, maybe it's from down here, we'll be able to, uh, you know, figure out what happened here. Hmm, well, if this was in a different spot, I could get this chain out. We'll just let it drape over that side. Slide this off. It's gonna be the same deal. Just We'll get it out when we pull the cams out. I think the wildest thing about this engine so far is the amount of oil squirters. We've got two here. They oil each chain and the sprocket that rides on the crank. There's one down here that oils this chain. And then you've got oil piped up this way. I don't know if that's air relief or oil. That looks like it would pump oil up. It's, uh, it's clear that they went through great lengths to make sure oil got to where it needed to. Now it's finally time to cram the cap caps loose. Well, apparently these don't make any noise. So sorry if this is boring. Well, I don't really see anything wrong. Not yet, anyway. The cams look good. The journals aren't terribly scored. And even when you flip the cam caps over, I'm trying to keep these in order here, everything looks good. And we didn't really see any signs of metal anywhere yet. Uh, we're just cracking this thing open. It's a little bit of wear on that journal. It's really not too bad. Let's look at that corresponding cam cap. No, it's not bad. One thing pretty notable about these engines is that the location of the head bolts is underneath the cam journal. And, uh, well, I haven't seen any other engines on the channel that are like that. I'm not sure if it's a good thing or a bad thing, but clearly they found a way to make it work. This is the actual Jaguar Land Rover head bolt removal tool. It's not a Snap-on or a Matco or some branded tools. It's from JLR and it's actually on loan to me. Uh, shout out to the super nice guys that let me borrow this to get this engine down from the local dealership. Uh, without that, I don't know that I could get this engine all the way apart. Now I have heard that you can use a long shank T60, but I don't think that's going to fit that great. Um, I also don't want to do anything I will regret doing on camera or even off camera. I want to get this engine done. Obviously, this is a multi-night filming uh, situation with this engine. This is a, a more difficult one. And I know you guys like the start to finish. I didn't want a part one or a part two. Thankfully, I was able to get my hands on the tool so we can get this whole engine torn down. Before we get the main head bolts out, we're going to get these perimeter bolts out. There's two T30s here and a 10 right there.
Out of curiosity, I looked up the torque spec on these head bolts. They are 15 foot pounds, 25 foot pounds, and then 90 degrees, and then 120. So I don't really know how tight that is, but we're going to find out. I gotta be careful too, I don't want to tear up the journal since the head bolts are right there. Yep, we're gonna we're gonna cease using the impact on this because I don't want to tear up those journals. These cylinder heads are worth way too much. Nope, I'm gonna break that. Wow, that one is still very. Did I forget to crack this one loose? Did I do this out of order? Am I slipping here? I'm not slipping. Am I slipping? If I'm slipping, I might be tripping. I don't think so. I sure did. Wow. Well, guys, that's how you know it's late. I'm just going to make sure these are all loose at about the same amount so that my power ratchet can handle them. Now I'm going to take a minute and uh, lightly bolt the cam caps back into place. That way they stay in order. They have to get sold with the head if the head's good. Just makes things a little bit easier for me. Please don't fall out. I think now we're ready to pull the head. It should just, you know, pop right off, I think. You know what? I've done this before. I'm going to get a pan. See anything terrible right off the bat? Head gasket doesn't look terrible. Well, we got to do our test. All the rods are connecting rods. So what gives? What's wrong here? Well, everything seems to look pretty good. Cylinder walls are beautiful, and all four pistons have the same basic look, so I don't think it was chewing on coolant or anything. Nothing's abnormally clean. What is that? That's not on that one. What is that? Is that a dent in the piston? I think it is. Let's go look at that cylinder head. Well, wouldn't you know it. I wonder what went through here. Obviously something that the uh, piston tried to uh, compress and it's not here any longer but it left its uh, calling card in the combustion chamber. The rest of these all look really nice. There's absolutely no notable damage. I expected to find bent valves with the timing chain looking the way it did but no. Time for the other side. Very similar condition on this side of the engine. No, no drastic wear. Nothing is pointing to an oiling malfunction. All the caps look nice. Cams look good. Kind of figured we'd see this. Same goes for the cylinder head. It all looks pretty tidy. There's a, a few marks there. It's not awful. Nothing, you know, nothing that would require any kind of uh, resurfacing or machine work. Unfortunately, I lost audio for these four bolts. It's not a big deal. There were uh, three T30s and a 10, but there's still another T30 right here because I need to get this tube out. Hopefully that just... 
I thought that was going to be like a dipstick tube or something. Thankfully, much easier. Now we can crack these head bolts loose. That one hurt my ears. All right, now we're gonna make sure they're loose enough that I can easily get them out. This impact, I swear. All right, this should be ready to come off. Wait. Where's my pan? Oh, I'm so glad I put that pan there. This head gasket also looks pretty good. Well, we have to conduct our test. Everything passes. I don't even see anything wrong with this side. The Bores look nice. There's a little bit of vertical scratching. Very hard to notice on camera. It's really not bad. And the cylinder head looks great too. So everything's in really good shape. At least on this side. Before we flip this over, we're going to get the oil cooler and this water outlet out of the way. It does come out, right? Yes. Now for the cooler. And there's the cooler. It's gonna, oh, it's leaking everything all over, everything all over the place. Yeah, so I didn't take that bolt out. At least if I did, please point it out in the video. I don't, I don't remember taking this out, but this was hanging out down here. So someone else has been in here. Maybe that's someone else's me. I don't know. God, I, that's, that looks like a terrible job to do in the car. Now it's time to flip the sharp lock over. Pull it apart from the bottom up. Actually, we'll just leave it like this so we can pull these high pressure fuel pumps. So this part is pretty peculiar to me. They mounted the high pressure fuel pumps down here on the pan. I bet there's a uh, oil pump cassette as such, and that's what drives these. So we're gonna crack these loose. We'll pull this feed line off. There's one pump. There's two. Let's see, will these come out? Yeah. So these are little pistons. We'll set these aside. Now, let's make a real mess, shall we? Start out with the lower pan. I mean, they give you a place to pry, but it doesn't seem to help. Yeah, it does. I lied. Oh no! Huh, that's weird. So a couple things I noticed right away was the dent in the uh, pickup. That's, uh, it doesn't look like that was done by a machine. There's also some debris in the screen. It's not a ton. Not even tucked away in the corners, but there is still some. The thing that I also am curious about is this sealant. So if you look closely, you'll see that there's some black, but for the most part you see gray, which I don't really have a problem with either color uh, for RTV or whatever kind of sealant you use. However, uh, that kind of tells me that someone may have been in there. there. There's a good look at both colors there. Unless that's just how they are, but I, I just can't imagine using two types of sealant. 
and there there's some debris in here it's not terrible I don't see any metal it's just uh, some stuff jammed in the corners right down there too there's a bunch of it what could that be let's see if it uh, sticks to my magnet I doubt it will no it doesn't I don't know what that is now it's time to remove the oil pan there's just a whole bunch of 10 millimeter bolts before I pull the pan I wanted to kind of show the rear main seal plate it actually bolts to the block and the oil pan which tells me that you likely cannot pull the oil pan with the transmission on. Thankfully I pulled all the bolts out before I mounted it to the stand so it should just you know come right off. Just like that. Oh I, I, sh I messed up guys. Maybe not. I was supposed to pull the vacuum pump but I didn't. Well, I've never seen crank cams, or are they cam cranks? Cram kinks? I have no idea what to call this. I'm sure there's an actual word. I just don't know it. But there, that's what drives the high pressure fuel pumps, and there's the oil pump. Another question for you guys that work on these all the time. Does this have to be timed? Unfortunately, I am not going to be pulling the oil pump apart. Uh, this is actually worth some money and I'd like to uh, you know make money on this core so we're going to pull the chain off and we don't need to get the gear off we can just hopefully pull this whole assembly with the windage tray all of this at once that's what we're gonna try to do anyway I don't think that piece of plastic came from this either the thing looks great Maybe it came from this. The next thing I need to do is take this bolt out of this uh, main cap here, and that way I can pull this whole assembly as one unit, hopefully. Almost got it caught there. That would have been bad. I already see why I can't do that. There's bolts underneath here. Okay. Well, we'll just... All right. Let's just do this in the most logical way possible, just take all the bolts out. Did that do anything for me? Why, yes it did. What about this? That, it all has to come apart. All right, let's pull the oil pump off. Nope, there's more. I don't know what more there is, but there's more. I can just tell. That's why we're gonna just pry on it. Ah, uh, that wasn't too bad. Oil pump is off. Okay, now I think I can get this off. Yeah, it wasn't too bad. That spins nice. I'm not pulling that apart. But I am going to look at this tensioner here. That's the last piece of uh, plastic that could have been the uh, source of that other piece of plastic we found. I don't think that's, I don't think that's broken. Now it's time for the rods and pistons. As always, we're going to start at the front of the engine and work our way to the back. All right, now normally I would never rotate this backwards, but the uh, crank bolt is actually reversed hand thread. So I'm not gonna hurt anything since there's no chain, no heads.
Oh, okay. The bearings, well, we didn't see any metal in this engine that would lead us to believe that these would have any damage. And of course, they are practically perfect. I don't see hardly any noticeable marks on them. This could be a lower mileage engine, or maybe it was just well taken care of. Now, the rod and piston design is similar to other European V8 engines and diesel engines. Uh, they actually do this so that you can actually fit the rod through the bore, otherwise it is wider than the actual bore. Uh, some of the Cummins engines are like that too. Now, when we pulled this engine apart, everything looked pretty good except for this rod and piston here. So I spent some time cleaning it, and you can see if this focuses, do your job, camera. There you go. It's got a hefty dent on that side, but more importantly, more damage over there that actually got into the crown. And I'm going to have to inspect that cylinder. That bore might be damaged from this. I wonder what this ingested. You guys got any uh, guesses here? Outside of that, everything else looks pretty good. All right, now I'm going to crack the main cap bolts loose. Uh, I'm going to do that with my breaker bar just because this socket is actually designed for Volkswagen head bolts and I don't want to break it. I don't know what's worse, using the impact or using this, but in my head using the impact could possibly break it easier than this. Oh yeah, there's no, there's no real torque here, but the sound is cool. There's that missing cracking sound you guys missed from the uh, cam caps. Now these could be pretty tight. Let's find out. Oh, we're bubbling. What is going on there? Releasing some pressure? Come on now. You know what? We're gonna turn this thing on its side. Oh man, it's firing rockets out. Hmm. Yeah, all these are really. I see. I believe this one's a thrust bearing. Look how nicely that moves. This one's tough. I had to move, it's just not far enough. Ah, yes. That was not the thrust bearing either. Okay, now we can just boop. Surprisingly, the main bearings are in worse condition than the rod bearings. They're still not terrible, but they're certainly not as nice as the uh, rod bearings, and I wonder why. Something I did want to point out, it looks like this has some uh, 
this is kind of milky in here, like uh, contaminated oil contaminated with uh, coolant. But we didn't see any other signs of it except for when we cracked some of those main cap bolts. They shot some stuff out. I just I don't know if that has anything to do with this or not. And the crank mirrors the damage on the uh, main bearings. You can see there's some of that milky, oily substance. It's not a lot, and we didn't see it anywhere else in this engine, so I don't, I don't really think that would be it, but maybe there's something wrong with the heads, and I, I didn't catch it, or I won't catch it until they go through a parts washer, or maybe to a machine shop. For the most part, these bores are pretty good. However, there's a few vertical scratches, and this is the cylinder, I believe, or maybe it's, I think it's this one, that had the, uh, damaged piston and there are more vertical scratches in this bore but still not still not awful I think this side is in better shape still a little bit of scratches it's not nothing that I can really feel with my fingernail though that's kind of interesting looking not awful of everything I've torn down on this channel, I'd say this engine ranks pretty high up there in the difficulty category. And it's not because it's an incredibly complicated engine. I mean, it's, it's pretty complicated. It's because I've never worked on one. I had to figure out a lot of things as I went, look up a lot of things. I had to go borrow tools from a friend that was able to borrow them from a guy that had them. And if it wasn't for that situation, this wouldn't have happened this week because there's no way I would have gotten this engine apart in time and I would have had to tear down another 5.3. It would have been terrible. Just kidding. I've got plenty of those engines. There'll be more of those in the future. This engine really wasn't hurt too bad, and I think it was the timing system that sent it back as a return. I think this engine probably made a ton of noise, or maybe had jumped time, and they sent it back. And most yards, most places that sell used engines, they're not gonna dive into one of these engines. It's very cost prohibitive to put a whole bunch of time and labor and effort into it to find out that there's something else wrong with it. And it's the same reason I couldn't just resell the engine after I found one problem with it. Sure, I've gotten good engines in that were supposed to be bad, but I won't waste somebody's time like that. I would never do that. I considered selling the sharp block from this thing but then I looked up the value of the crank and the rods and pistons and the block, the heads, everything, and it, it all makes more sense in pieces. Plus, there's a lot less liability when you're selling a set of rods and pistons versus a short block or a crankshaft versus a short block. It just it makes more sense that way. I'll come out ahead, and yes, it feels good to win as a business. A lot of the cores I've torn down lately have not had a lot of sellable parts. So this part feels good. I know you guys like the carnage, and I promise I've got some really blown up stuff in the future, some stuff I've never had on the channel. But for this week, it felt good to win. If you'd like to buy parts off of this engine, or anything else I've torn down, or if you happen to catch my community post, I bought this 2007 Mustang GT from Copart. It had no underhood pictures, none. But I spied that the right rear tire was an ET Street. And then if you zoom in way far on the picture, you can kind of make out the word Vortec on a bent up intercooler that was stuffed underneath the car. And so I took a gamble and it turns out this thing had a Paxton Novi 2200 supercharger and a bunch of good aftermarket parts. This car is loaded with good stuff. So hopefully by the time this video goes up, I'll have a price list and a parts list on it. You can check importapart.com in the blog section. You'll see everything, pictures of the car, the whole nine. If you'd like to buy parts off of it, you can go there. You can also call us. Our phone number is on our website. You can email us at importapartsales at gmail.com. Either way, I really hope you enjoyed this teardown. As always, I love all the comments, all the feedback, and even the criticism. I love it all, and I'll catch you on the next one.